the bottom line is that wherever the plane is, whether it's on the ground or it's in the air, it's rotating with the spot on the ground that it's directly over. And, you know, you can, you can easily see this with cars, trains, and, uh, auto, and, air, and aircraft. So, I mean, I, I don't understand why there's such a big issue about it. Bob, what's the difference between the cars, the train, and the airplane as far as traveling? Oh, you came for your lesson. Good. All right. So, if you have, if you're taking a trip from Lansing, Michigan to Sault Ste. Marie, which is 300 miles roughly due north, and you're on a train, if you take that train directly north, it'll follow the tracks all the way up and it'll assume the rotation as it goes, correct? You don't have to make an, you don't have to take into account Coriolis because the tracks keep you on a particular spot on the ground, correct, Brandon? Yes, because the train is right. attached to the ground. Yeah. Next, next, if you're driving that same distance, all right, if you were to start in Lansing and point your car due north and drive, it would curve to the right, according to Coriolis. But to stay on the highway, all you have to do is make a very tiny little correction to keep it in your lane on the highway. Do you agree with that? No, I don't think Coriolis impacts trains or cars. But anyway, continue your uh, statement. Yeah, no, you have to answer the question. I just did. Okay. You have to make a slight correction to the left to stay in your lane, and it's a very tiny little correction. Can now, you show me a citation for that, some evidence, some experimental evidence or of observational course, I can drive evidence? From, of course. I can drive from Lansing to Sault Ste. Marie, and I will stay on the highway. Thank you. I'm, I've got to be I'm honest. This is the first time that I've ever heard anybody claim that Coriolis impacts vehicles on the freeway. Can you please provide some evidence to back up that? Claim. Yes, the the rotational speed of the Earth at Lansing is different than the rotational speed of the Earth at Sault Ste. Marie, and in order to get to in order to change that rotation, you have to make adjustments as you drive on the highway. Now, if you fly an airplane from Lansing Airport, so you're asserting follow- your model to prove your model. Bob, ha- have you ever uh, been on an escalator? and tried to walk right. against where the escalator's trying to take you, walk opposite All right, we're, look, escalator. we're not, Jeff, I'll, I'll take care of, I'll, I'll answer your question next, but we're going to, we're, we're educating Brandon right now. All right, I appreciate so, that. So, if I am in an airplane and I fly a thousand feet over that highway, and I follow that highway all the way to Sault Ste. Marie, do you agree that I can literally follow the highway all the way to Sault Ste. Marie and arrive in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay. See, Bob, we haven't gotten past the second part where you asserted that right. a vehicle now, do you on the understand that? is impacted by Coriolis. Do you understand what I just said? A thousand feet over the ground, I'm following the highway all the way to Sault Ste. Marie. See, you haven't now, backed up you, your second statement, Bob. You need to provide evidence for that because you're building on top of it. Okay, so we're going back to what I just said. If I fly 1,000 feet over the highway, I can follow the highway all the way from Lansing to Sault Ste. Marie. Now, I've got a rotational speed of that aircraft at the airport in Lansing, and I have a rotational speed of that aircraft in Sault Ste. Marie. You agree that when I'm on the ground at both those locations, I am rotating at the same speed of the Earth. As I follow the highway up, I assume that new rotation in Sault Ste. Marie because I'm maintaining my my position directly above the highway, which means that instead of curving to the right, according to Coriolis, I am physically making adjustments to maintain my ground track over that highway. And by the time I reach Sault Ste. Hey, hey, Marie, hey, hey, you're gonna you're gonna monologue, or you're gonna you're asking questions, you're making statements. No, I'm instructing claims. you. I'm instructing. No, I don't need your instruction, Bob. If you want to have a discussion, we can have a discussion. I don't need teacher Bob to come in and condescend to me. Apparently you do. You've already made multiple statements that you haven't provided any evidence for. Okay. But I do agree with you that the ground speed of a plane anywhere is the same as a ground speed of a plane anywhere because the earth isn't rotating. You haven't provided any evidence that a plane needs to correct for the rotation of the earth. You haven't provided any evidence that a car needs to correct for the rotation of the Earth. 
You're just making claims and using your model to back up the claims. Okay, you understand that the rotational speed of the Earth at Lansing is different than the rotational speed of the Earth at Sault Ste. Marie. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. It's zero in both okay. locations. Okay, well then you can't. Okay, so you can't understand this. That's why. That's why you're running into a problem. Uh, yeah. Actually, I understand it perfectly well. Can you? Okay. Let's just skip to the end here. Can you tell me by what mechanism? the plane in the air picks up momentum from the ground to remain on its uh, ground track, as you say. When you say it, it picks yes. up the speed from the ground, how does it pick it up? By following the ground track, and that so requires So as long as you're over aviation. a spot on the ground, a rotating object, you'll pick up the speed from that ground, even though you're not attached Correct. to it. Is that your contention? Correct. Absolutely. That's magic, Bob. No, that's physics. That's magic, dude. What is the mechanism by which that happens? The physical mechanism by which that happens? Yeah, okay, well, then let's see if we can help you out here a little bit more. You, so you can't help me out, fly, Bob. Just answer the question. We don't need okay. all this other shit. So if I fly the airplane from Lansing to Sault Ste. Marie and I maintain a specific direction in space, I will curve to the right due to Coriolis. In order to counter that, I need to put control input in slightly to the left, which increases my velocity in that vector towards the left. Okay. So now, you pick up momentum with the rotation of the Earth. Let's say you're flying north. I follow the rotation the is path, going yes. east-west, right? West-east. So you're going to pick up that vector by increasing your speed at, in a northern direction. Is that I'm going what you're to, claiming? I'm going to pick up that vector by maintaining my flight track over the ground in that direction. You betcha. What is the physical uh, mechanism by which you inherit the ground speed from the ground below you, Bob? All right. It's very easy. So if I'm over Grayling and I land at Grayling and I sit on, okay, I followed the highway all the way up to Grayling, Michigan. All right. Now, if I land at Grayling and I sit on the ground there at Grayling, obviously I'm rotating uh, at the same speed the Earth is rotating at Grayling. Which is zero. It's not zero, no. It's about 735 miles an hour. So as you take off from Grayling and I go to Gaylord, which is 30 miles north, and land there, I'm sitting on the ground. I'm rotating at the same speed of the Earth, which is a little bit less. When you're so, in the air, Bob, what is the physical mechanism by which you inherit momentum from the ground below? I am you controlling. Say you just have to be over a spot on the ground. What exactly. is the physical mechanism? Yes. What I'm doing is I'm putting in control corrections to maintain my position on that flight path over the what ground. What kind of control corrections are you putting in, Bob? I'll turn the airplane slightly. I'll, I'll, so I'll you can gain momentum in a vector that's uh, perpendicular to your. Uh, yes. Heading by turning slightly. Yes, that's you, called. How do you vectors. gain momentum by turning, Bob? How does that happen? Okay. Well, when the aircraft is moving, you have a vector that's going in the direction of the nose of the aircraft, and then if you turn to the left or the right, you have a vector that goes out over the wings. All right. Now, depending on how much you turn, that depends on how much you change that vector. All right. So you're essentially saying that you need to adjust your flight plan. So you wouldn't actually be flying no, no. over that uh, freeway. You'd adjust no, your Brandon, flight you're... plan in order to meet All the right. spot on there. Is that what you're saying? I don't adjust the flight plan. I follow the You just said you turn. Plan. You change your heading. I, yes, I change the heading of the aircraft to maintain position over the ground at that location. The flight plan is the flight plan. It's a great circle course. All right. So as I follow, Same great circle course doesn't just impart uh, legitimacy on your argument, Bob. I'm just telling you how flight plans are made. They are great circle courses. All right. So as I follow that great circle course, I have the same velocity, rotational velocity, as the point on the ground underneath me because I've controlled my aircraft to make sure that I'm still over that spot on the ground. Your All argument right. seems to be that as long as you are over a certain spot on the ground, you maintain the momentum that that spot on the ground has. That's your e argument. Exactly. Correct? Very good. Very good. Yeah, which is zero the whole time. That's why it makes sense to you, Bob, because the ground speed yeah. is zero. The rotational speed is zero no matter where you are. That's your so assertion. That's why it works out yeah, perfectly. That's your everywhere. assertion that the Earth isn't rotating, which is 
demonstrably false. So here, let's it's see if I can make this Bob, a little. Give me some evidence because the evidence that you're providing right now lines All up right, perfectly let me with see. a stationary Earth. You are literally describing how you would fly over a stationary Earth. All right, let me see if I can maybe make this a little simpler for you. If I take off from Lansing and I go one mile north, I, I think would you, you need to agree? find a way to make it simpler for yourself. No, no, I understand it quite well. So if no, I take I off from Lansing, let's go back to fly... the car on the ground, Bob. How exactly is the car impacted by Coriolis? Do you have any evidence to back this up? The positions on the ground are are at a different rotational speed as you go north. So I leave I, I leave Lansing. I've never heard that claim before. Bob. And Do you have any evidence that a car traveling on the ground is impacted by Coriolis as it moves north or south? Sure. Yes or no? So, yes. So, what is and your I'm evidence besides you. reifying with your model? I'm giving it to you right now. So when I'm in Lansing and I get in my car and I get on 127 and I head north, when I go one mile north, I have changed my latitude, which means the rotational speed of the Earth is slightly different. How do I adjust for that? It's a very slight deviation, okay? You know, that's one minute. So it's a very, very tiny deviation, and it's very simple to do the math. All right. I, could, I could do math just fine. I can do math on your model okay, well, just fine. Why don't you fine. go ahead and do it it's then? It's the actually substantiating your claims in reality is where you're failing, Bob. Okay. And, so the, and the I, magical physics you're using as your plane flies well, over the ground to you want, gain momentum but... from the ground beneath you. Now, okay, how do well, these corrections fine. change as you fly south or uh, north to Same south, way. say from Same Anchorage way. to Mexico City? As the difference between your plane speed and the ground increases, it's exactly not linear. Exactly the same way. Exactly so the with same bigger way. corrections, is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly the same way. No, it, okay. it's corrected exactly the same way. So if I'm in, so if I'm in my so car, so what you're saying and essentially land, is that stop if, talking if, and listen would, to the you answer. You would constantly Brandon. be correcting one way or the other. So pilots are constantly correcting to the left or right, depending on which direction they're going, north or south. I mean, is that your claim? I mean, to maintain their ground path. You're yes. constantly turning because you ha it has to be constant turn since it's a, a constant change. Indeed. Right? Yes. Is that what you're saying? So pilots physically turn a little left the whole time or turn a little right the whole time, depending on whether they're going north or south. Pilots maintain their ground track the whole Answer time. Answer my question, Bob. Yes I or just no? Did. Do pilots constantly correct to the left or right, depending on if they're going north or south? They correct whatever they need to maintain their ground track. Yes or no, account. Bob? I just said yes. So that has to do with and that has to do with crosswinds and a number of other things. They constantly correct their course to maintain their ground track across the ground. Hey, Bob, and do cars constantly that, have to correct if you're heading up 75 from Florida to Michigan? Do cars yes. constantly have to correct to uh, overcome Coriolis as they travel? Yeah. They, they have to correct to overcome uh, any factors that t try and take them off of their ground track, which is the center of their lane. What experimental uh, uh, evidence proves that cars on the ground are impacted by Coriolis? I drove from Michigan to Florida once and found experimental Florida. Experimental evidence, Bob? That's an experiment. Like empirical evidence? Do you have any empirical evidence for it? Yes, I I managed to I managed to maintain my ground track. All so the way if Bob Florida drives and... in his car from Florida to Michigan, that's a scientific experiment, and that creates empirical evidence that you could publish a uh, I don't know an article in Physics Monthly. I don't monthly really need to because all the forces are very well understood. I'm explaining. So you have no Coriolis evidence, too. correct? I'm explaining Coriolis. Too. You have no evidence that a car on the ground is impacted. Okay, well by you can Coriolis, talk correct? over me. You you've gotten the information now. So what you do? I've with got it... no information. I've gotten you just uh, invoking your model to say that planes automatically inherit momentum from the ground. And I love this one, Bob. That pilots constantly have to turn left or right depending on which direction they're flying. I said pilots have to constantly adjust their course to maintain their ground track. If you're going so to they don't me, have to correct right. left or right constantly as they fly north or south. Is that what you're saying now? That's part of it. That's Do part they of have, it. Is there a constant correction required? Let's say there was no wind. Let's say there was nothing else blowing the airplane across from its track. Would they constantly have to correct left or right? by turning the wheel a little to go in a different heading in order to get to their destination and stay over their ground track. Yes. The Coriolis effect, the Coriolis effect on the car is comparable to rolling a ball over an empty rotating merry-go-round. Shout out to Zombie Wolf. Well, that's a nice story. Uh, if you got any evidence to back up the fact that cars are impacted Coriolis, let me know. I'll be around.
Good night. I, anyway, think we thanks gave that, I think we gave that by demonstrating that, or by uh, talking about the rotational speed of the Earth at the point of origin and the point of destination is you different. You just invoked you the model. Pick that up. That's all you did. You have to you have to pick that difference up in order to be stationary at both locations. And you're stationary at any point along that highway or at any point along that flight path. You're stationary I, relative to the Earth. If you repeat the same thing over and over again, does it come become more true the, the more times you repeat it, Bob? No, it's true because it's a oh, fact. Sure. And quite Let me frankly, know when you get some evidence other than Bob took a drive. Well. Now, in the rail example, if the rails were going those three degrees due north, exactly north, and was smooth, level, constant elevation, pardon my French, constant elevation portion across those three degrees, the, there would be a, a, a westward acceleration to absorb that, or that 26 mile an hour delta V, and an instrument can measure that. And that is, in fact, a shear force on the railroad rails, but it's minuscule, and a very high-precision instrument can measure that westward acceleration because... Well, the interesting thing is one side of the rail would probably be um, a real amount warmer than the other side of the rail, you know? Well, the, 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 the mechanical construct of of railroad wheels, you know, in the real world would it, it'd be too slight because the tire on a railroad wheel is actually conical, so it'll rest in the center. So the flange isn't going to rub against, and it's it's too small to eat to be realized in the temperature of the rims. But a sensitive accelerometer would pick up that that westward acceleration, and with a proper interface on dealing with those minor very small quantities of beta would in fact show oh you're going due north because yeah. that acceleration is is um well support. the other thing that they they absolutely cannot comprehend and they never take into account and i started to do this before brandon started talking over me constantly if i leave lansing and i go and i go to st john's which is 20 miles north along the highway all right I have had to pick up a slight difference in the rotational speed of the Earth between Lansing and St. John's 20 miles north. Once I'm in St. John's, I'm at the rotational speed of St. John's. So my, my difference is zero. So I go another 20 miles north up to St. Louis, and I've got to pick that little slight difference in rotational speed up again. But then I'm back to zero because I'm on the ground stationary in St. Louis. And I do and, that all and, 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 and you're not picking it up episodically, right? And you're going along, and actually a, a car driving on pavement is very much analogous to railroad rails because of the constant contact with the earth, and the earth is pulling you along to constantly impart that tiny fraction of a mile per hour per, per minute. So, yeah, it's... It's very, 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 very slight, and I, I got to ask one question. Well, the only difference—the only difference between the railroad and the car—is the railroad is locked in onto the rails, whereas the car has to be actually maneuvered. Mm -hmm.